Hello and welcome to another episode of Unstuck with Hypnopunk Transformation with Edge. Today's very special program. It is the audio from my TED talk from a few years ago from Ottawa University. And the whole story, the amazing story that brought me to the dance, so to speak, to delivering that TED talk, to be one of the first hypnotists to ever give a TED talk. So all that along with the TED talk, which is specifically on learning strategies, how to become a better student, will be covered later on in this podcast. As always, I'd like to give a big shout out for those who have left their five star reviews. You remember, I love those on Google Play, on iTunes, on Spotify, on YouTube, wherever you listen to this show. And um, that's what lets me know that the word is getting out there. So please um, do subscribe to the show. Do give it a like and do share so we can continue to grow this audience. So the story starts like this. A few years ago, I was walking around with uh, one of my friends and uh, we're just shooting the shit. And he says, you like to talk a lot. You like to run your mouth off a lot. You'd be good at giving one of those TED Talks talking about the mind, talking about hypnosis, all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that would be great. And, you know, kind of nice little pump up to my ego, but I didn't really give it that much thought. But the seed was planted. And, um, and I put it into my story. I've talked about my story before. I think it's podcast number 11 or something. You can find it in the archives and a story is something that I recite to myself every day, it's something I teach my clients to do. Basically what you do is you write down everything that's not working for you in your life, be that uh, beliefs, be that conditions you may have, behaviours. So if you're fat, you're right, I'm fat. If you're lonely, you put you're lonely. If you're poor, you put you're poor. If you're a smoker and you don't like it, you put I'm a smoker. Everything that's not working for you that you don't like, behaviours, uh, limiting beliefs, all that stuff, negative emotions. And then you simply rewrite it. So if you're fat, you write in the opposite. I'm, I'm lean, I'm the absolute perfect body shape I want to be. If you're a smoker and you want to quit, I'm a happy, healthy non-smoker and it's easy and effortless to be this way each and every day. If you're poor, each and every day I'm attracting all the money that I need to be totally successful, to help people and be passionate about my work, about my career and do all the fun things that I want and buy all the things that I want to accumulate, whatever it is. And yeah, it's deluding and it's uh, brainwashing. Um, but when you recite your, your limiting beliefs to yourself and you say, I'm not good enough, um, I'll never get over this depression, I'll never be able to deal with my anxiety, I'll never be able to quit smoking, whatever it is, you're also brainwashing yourself, but you're brainwashing yourself with bullshit. At least with my way, the story way, you've got a way out of this. So I always practice what I preach. So I wrote my story, and my story is about nine minutes. It encompass every area of my life that wasn't going right. And I rewrote it in a way that it is going right, and it's going right, and it's going right, and it's going right so easily and effortlessly that I'm enjoying it all the time. So it encompasses every area of my life. So I sprinkled into that story that I recite every day. I listen to it on audio, or I read it out loud, or I read it in my mind. But I, I've done it for so many years now, um, I don't necessarily, I do it almost unconsciously, if you will. And I just sprinkled in there, put the seed of, yeah, and I've given a TED talk and it went really well and it was really successful and I really enjoyed it and everyone loved it and learned lots from it and used these skills and come up to me and told me how great it was and I was the best speaker. I put it in there and I literally forgot about it. Yeah, I was kind of reading it every day, but I, I, my story's nine minutes long. There's a lot of stuff in it. I don't harper on one section uh, too long. And I, and I kid you not, I shit you not, about a year to the day that I put this in the story, um, after I've spoken to my friend Avi, uh, I'm up late one night, uh, as you are, and I'm going through Facebook, and, and I see a little ad that pops up that says, um, you've got 12 hours to submit to your TED Talk to Ottawa University. So I said, oh, that's, yeah, I remember talking about Avi, talking to Avi about that. So I clicked on the link and he asked what you want to talk about, you only had 12 hours, so I, I made up some stuff. Like, what's a university? Lots of students. Um, I, you know, I guess if I if I pitch something about learning hypnosis and learning, it it might get accepted. It took me I don't know less than thirty minutes to fill out the application form. I sent it. Didn't expect to get picked up. Didn't really give much thought of it. I'm like, ah, TED Talk. No one knows who I am. <clears throat> it's not going to get picked up. I just I just throw and goad, so to speak, if that's such a phrase. Throw and go. <clears throat> 
And then uh, a couple of days later, I, I received uh, an email from the organizer saying I'd, I'd, I'd been accepted. So I thought, wow, okay, I better start practicing this and uh, actually have something really good to say. And um, in my mind, call it ego, call it knowing how good I am, call it whatever you want, having a high value on myself and what I do. Call it whatever you want, call it confidence, self-esteem. But I want to be the main event. I don't want to be stuffed in the mid-card somewhere and forgotten about. So I added to my story that I am the main event to TED Talks. Now, they didn't tell me what the placement was at this time. There's no reason to put me as the main event because at that point, it's many years ago, people didn't know who I was. And um, so I put into my story that I was main event in TED. So anyways, long story short, it, it came to, to the day. It was a Sunday. It was at Ottawa University. And I arrive. And um, they give me the running order. And I, I, I'm the last speaker. I am the main event. <clears throat> I'm like, oh shit, I better give these, uh, these folks something to remember. And uh, I listened to the other TED Talks, and um, honestly, they were horrible. They were long, they were boring, the, the presenters were not charismatic, were not charming, they were not engaging with the audience. It, it was just being, like the audience were being talked at, and I, and I, and I watched, and I was like, oh, this is, this is just horrible, it's just horrible, I've got to, I've got to be me, I've got to do completely the opposite of what all these other people have are doing so literally i kind of rewrote everything about an hour before i was going to give my ted talk that was being broadcast live around the world literally rewrote it in my mind and watched what everyone else does as i typically do in my life and i did the opposite of every speaker because i watched the other speakers and i'm like if i'm a student hell if i'm just somebody listening this is fucking awful i have to do the opposite i don't want to be like any of these people here and it was one of the first times I'd actually spoken spoken in public to a large uh, a large group of people. So I go to give my TED talk, and um, the the chap who's introducing everyone, God bless him, lovely guy, lovely lovely man. But as you're here, he butchers my name, he murders my name, he calls me. I don't know what he calls me, but it's some. Um, it's not my name. He calls me someone else's name. So I believe I, I, I correct him when I get up on stage. So you know it is me, Luke Michael Howard, the clinical hypnotist. Um, so long story short, I, I give the talk. You're going to listen to it. It's about 16, 17 minutes in length. I share at least three strategies that I've actually used with clients to help them become better students, be in a more relaxed state when they're studying, be able to recall information better and how to put yourself into hypnosis before you go into exams. So you're going to get all of that today when you listen to the talk. And when I finished, I decided, well, I'm just going to stick around a little bit. And I stuck around and was literally mobbed in the hall. It was, it was great. It was like feeling like a rock star. And I realized that no other speaker, every other speaker had come, they'd, 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 they'd done the talk and they just left. It's just gone. I finished my talk and I just, I'm just like, I'm going to stick around a little bit, you know, see what's going. I was literally mobbed by one question after the other, after the other. It was lovely. It was a lovely feeling. It was a lovely feeling to have that, to have, to have these people to come up to me and ask me about hypnosis and, and give me feedback on my talk and let me know that they, that they enjoyed it. It, it. it made the whole thing certainly, certainly worthwhile. Um, so yeah, it was a big moment for me, and you are going to hear that here today. Subsequently, over the years, I've, I've, I know many hypnotists, specifically, that have given TED Talks. But I truly believe that about five years ago, there, was, there may have been one or two hypnotists, but there wasn't many of us that had given a TED Talks. So I'm certainly one of the first, and, and you're going to hear that here today. And you're going to have those tangible tools. So please use it. Share it with young people or yourself. I don't know if you're young or old. It's no age on studying and students, but use these skills for yourself, for your kids, for your grandkids. Teach them these skills. Let them listen to it. They're very tangible. They're very usable, workable skills in the real world. And as always, tell a friend. Tell a friend about this podcast because that's how we grow it. Tell a friend about this podcast. Give them the link on Spotify, on iTunes, or Google Play, or YouTube. Let them know. Let's grow the audience. Tell a friend about this show so we can get the message out there and change the universe. Without further ado, here is my TED Talk on learning strategies from Ottawa University. I will see you, or hear you, or you'll hear me on the other side. And last but not least, we have Dr. Luke Michael. Dr. Michael is a clinical hypnotist. That basically means he's a head hacker, a professional one. 
Um, he hacks people's heads and helps them overcome traumas, make more money, and have incredible sex. Uh, he specializes in helping people quit smoking in one hours, in one hour, and lose weight when all else fails. When his, with his patented gastric band hypnosis method. Uh -huh. Dr. Luke has a master's degree on hypnosis and a PhD in psychology. He has been practicing hypnosis um, for almost two decades internationally. He's been featured in all forms of media such as CBC Radio, CTV, Rogers TV, and Tone Magazine. Dr. Luke's motto is, free your mind and your ass will follow. And the title of his talk is, The Power of Hypnosis and how it can make you a happier and better student. Welcome, Dr. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Luke, and I'm a hypnotist. And can I just get another round of applause for my shoes, please? See, the good thing about being a hypnotist is you can ask people to do things and they just do it. It's like quite amazing. It's a pretty cool job. Um, who here wants to be more calm? Who here wants to be more focused? Who here wants to achieve more academic success? Well, hypnosis can help you with all of that stuff. But I just want to try something with you because today I just don't want to just talk at you because I know you've had a lot of speakers here, but I want to give you an experience. So if I could get you just to all raise your arms like so, but make sure you don't take anyone's eyes out to the right or left. And if I could get you just to shake your hands like that, fantastic, put your arms down. There's no reason to do that. It just makes me smile when we get people to do that. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I do want you to do something though, but I want you to watch me first and do it. This is a wonderful experiment and I'm going to unpackage it for you in a moment. Just watch me first. In a moment, I'm going to get you to interlock your fingers like so in your arms. I'm going to ask that you bend your arms like so, like you're making a desperate prayer and you might want to make one while you're there. I'm going to ask that you open up your index finger, that's your pointy fingers, and just focus on the gap in between, like so. So if you just do that now, get your arms, make sure you don't take anyone's eyes out, interlock your fingers nice and tight. Imagine there's a piece of coal in your hands and you're crushing it really tight. Bend your arms or your elbows. Now separate your index fingers. Now focus on the gap between the index fingers and nowhere else, because in a moment those fingers are going to touch all by themselves. It's as if there's one magnet on one finger and another magnet on the other finger, and they're getting closer and closer together. That's right. Almost imagine that your fingers are a vice and they're getting closer and closer together. Like we're using a piece of yarn, it's getting closer and closer and closer together. Let it happen. Will it to happen and it will happen. Just open up your hands now, just shake them out. So who here felt their fingers touch right there? Kind of interesting, right? That's all hypnosis is. I simply gave you a simple suggestion, tapping into your imagination, your focus and intelligence to allow your fingers to get closer. And that's how quickly it is, can be to change things or pick up bad habits in life. Now, I know a lot of us are students. Uh, put your hands up if you're a student here. Yeah, oh, good. We're at OWU, yes, yeah, so I'd imagine that most of us are, unless we crept in. Um, so, exams come up and oftentimes we get really stressed when exams come um, and uh, fight or flight sometimes kicks in in an exam situation but oftentimes you hear people talking about fight or flight in the parasympathetic nervous system like you might want to avoid a fight or you want to fly and get the hell out of there but there's also another concept that we don't talk about a lot which is freeze what happens when you just freeze you're in an exam situation you've done all the studying your parents have funded your exam and you're there and you've done all this year of research all these years of studying and your mind just goes blank and you're like oh shit yeah anyone ever ex experienced something like that before in their life it's terrifying right now it can build up this phobia inside people. Um, so oftentimes we have a fear of success, we have a fear of failure when it comes to an exam, we have a fear of what happens if I can't retrieve that information in my mind at the exact moment. What if I don't live up to expectations? So much stress we put on ourselves. And sometimes when we've got so much stress and anxiety and we enter that state, we become what we refer to technically as stupid. 
Because it's almost like, have you ever come back from a party late one night and you, you get home, you arrive home, and you look for your keys for your front door and you reach into your pocket or your purse and you go where your keys are, but you can't find your keys and you're searching, where are my keys? Did I, did I leave them at the party? Did I leave them in the house? Did I leave them in the car? It's Canada, it's minus 40, I'm really cold, I need to get in, where are my keys? And for five minutes you're frantic looking for your keys. And then five minutes later, you go back, you reach back into your pockets and the keys were there all the time. Anyone experienced something like that? Yeah. That's actually a very deep form of hypnosis. We call it negative hallucination. You actually hallucinate in a way something that was there, your keys, and we've all experienced something like that before. Um, what I'd like to give you today is I'd like to give you three tools, three experiences that if you use, not just when it comes in for exam situations or study situations, but in life, it's just going to make you happier. It's going to make you healthier, and it's going to make you have more academic success. Who here would be okay if I taught you those three things? Fantastic. Now, the first thing is, and I've never met someone, being a hypnotist for close to 20 years across the world now, and, and working with lots of different types of people, I've never ha met somebody who didn't have this problem. We call it the negative chatterbox, the negative voice you have inside your head. We all have this voice. It's the voice that says, I'm not going to succeed here. Uh, I'm going to be shit in this exam. Um, I've just wasted four years of my life. What am I doing? I'm really stressed. Ah, ah, ah. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to just go ahead and just close your eyes, if you would, for me right now. And I want you to get in touch with that negative voice you have inside your head. And if anyone doesn't have that negative voice, come and see me after the talk because I want to meet you and model you. And just get in touch with that voice. And we've all got our own voice, but the voice that says, you can't do it, you're not good enough, this is a waste of time, you're not going to pass that exam. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to change that voice inside your head into a picture. And with that picture now, I'd like you in your mind to use your powers of imagination, focus and intelligence and use some black duct tape and tape up that voice and then what I'd like you to do in your mind is I'd like you to take that voice and I'd like to push it all the way back behind you all the way back into the past to it disappear so it's like a grain of salt like a piece of sand like a piece of dust so you can barely see it anymore and you certainly can't hear it then using your imagination, your focus and intelligence, I'd like you to erect a force field or a shield between you and the distance where that old voice used to be. And then try and make that voice come back now, but when it comes back, it hits the screen. And then try again. Try and get that voice now to come back, but it hits the screen and bounces off. It can't touch you. Once again, try in vain to get that voice back, and it comes and it hits that screen, and it bounces off. Go ahead and open your eyes. For some of you, that might be the quietest that's ever been inside your mind. That's a tool that you can use over and over again. And the more you use it, the more you light up the neuro pathways in your brain and you'll become stronger and stronger and replace that voice with something more positive. Second thing I'd like to teach you today is about memory. Now, our unconscious mind, or some people call it subconscious mind, is like the little black box on an aeroplane. It records everything from when we're in our mother's womb to the day that we die. Everything. You don't have to think about breathing every second of the day. You just breathe. You don't have to think about sending blood to a little toe on your left foot right now. It just happens. You don't think about what your next thought is. It just pops up. Now, if you just go ahead and you imagine that your memory, your unconscious mind, is very much like a filing system. And if you just put lots of files in a filing system, but you don't label them, you don't put tabs on there, you just put paper in there, information willy-nilly, it's really hard to access that information when you need it. But a good tool to do, and I'd like you just again, just to close your eyes for a moment, and imagine that you've got an exam coming up. And for example, let's just say, for argument's sake, it's English literature. So you sit down, it's exam day. You're sitting down on your exam chair in the exam room and the exam table. The paper's there asking you those questions that are going to determine your academic future. And what I'd like you to do is get into the habit of, in the exam, close your eyes. And close your eyes right now if they're not already closed, at least inside. And imagine in your mind that you access that file that says English literature. And you pull out that file in your mind and you crack it open. And you grab that piece of paper, that page, that you know has the answer for you. Because you've studied diligently. And everything you've ever studied is in there. We just need to make sure that you've got a nice, clean and easy way to do that. You can go ahead.
pain, open your eyes right now. And again, the more you try that, the more powerful it will be. One last thing I'd like to try, try with you today is I'd like to give you a real experience. And you don't have to partake in this, but you might watch the other people around you partake in. But I'd like to give you the gift of deep relaxation or self-hypnosis. So what I'm going to ask you to do in a moment, if you want to play along, and it's real fun, is I'm going to count from 1 to 20. And after a while, your body starts going to start to feel really relaxed. Your mind's going to be really relaxed. Your legs are going to be really, really relaxed. And your mind's going to be really quiet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count from 1 to 20. When I count 1, whenever I count, I'd like you to blink your eyes. And in between each number, you open your eyes. So it looks something like this. 1, 2, 3. And for some of you, we might get up to 5. For some of you, we might get up to 10. For some of you, we might get all the way up to 15 until your eyes just want to close and stay closed. And whenever that is for you, you can just allow them to stay closed because I want to give you a gift. So what I'd like you to do now, guys, is I'd like you to look at the screen behind me. But look as though you're looking through it. Imagine that you're looking through the screen behind me, but you're looking through it. And just let your gaze expand. And almost have a dreamy-like look in your eyes and your mind. And as you keep your eyes focused behind me looking through the wall, I'd like you to imagine, just imagine, your favourite piece of scenery. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And just close your eyes now if they're not already closed because I want to give you a gift. And I want to speak to the part of you that controls everything from your respiration to your memories to the kind of emotions and feelings that you have. I'd like to speak to that part now and I'd like to ask you to remember a time when you felt totally calm. It can be a time if you've experienced and if you've never felt totally calm, just imagine what it'd feel like. I want you to see what you'd see, hear what you'd hear and feel what you'd feel when you were totally calm inside your mind. And when that feeling of calmness gets to an all-time peak, with your eyes closed, I simply want you to get your thumb and index finger of your left hand and push them together, apply some pressure. And take a big deep breath and relax and open up your hands, but keep your eyes closed. Clear the screen inside your mind now. I'd like you to remember a time when you felt totally focused, where you were totally in the moment, when you were totally in the zone. And if you've never experienced something like that, just imagine what it'd feel like. I'd like you to see what you'd see, hear what you'd hear, and feel how you'd feel when you were or imagined to be totally focused in the moment. When that feeling gets to its peak, I'd simply like you to get, once again, your thumb and index finger of your left hand and push them together, apply some pressure. And then simply relax your hand, clear the screen in your mind, keep your eyes closed. I'd like to give you one more thing now. And I'd like you to remember a time when you felt totally resourceful. When you felt totally resourceful and you had everything you needed to be a total success. It might be something that's happened to you in the past or something you might just want to imagine. But I want you to see what you'd see, hear what you'd hear and feel what you'd feel if you were totally resourceful as if you were living it now. And when that emotion gets to its peak, one more time, I'd like you to get your thumb and index finger of your left hand and put them together, apply some pressure, take a deep, big deep breath in through your nose and breathe out and relax your hands. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. When my count reaches five, you're going to open your eyes and you'll be fully emerged back in this room, but you'll have a new tool that whenever you apply that pressure on the left hand of your thumb and index finger, that neuro pathway will light up in your mind. You'll feel calmer, you'll feel more resourceful, and you'll feel more focused. And the more you use this anchor, the more powerful it will be. One, two, three, four, five. Eyes open, guys. Emerge back. 
So that's a cool little tool that you can use in any event in life. And the more you use it, the more powerful it will be as it will come flooding through you those wonderful feelings of focus, of clarity, of imagination and resourcefulness. <clears throat> I'm almost done. Um, but I'm going to be in the forehay. For, for, for hay. We call it forehay back home, but foray or forum outside after the talks. If you have any questions about hypnosis for study or hypnosis in general, please come by and ask me some questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. But thank you so much. And our motto at Luke Gnosis, my company, one more time, is three your mind and your ass will follow. Thank you so much, guys. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling very relaxed and resourceful. <laughs> and this concludes our uh, this year's TEDx U Ottawa event. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and thank you once again for being a part of it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed my TED talk as much as I enjoyed delivering it. I hope you take note of those three or four tangible skills that I share to become a better student and will share it with yourself, with your conscious minds and with people that you love and care about. If there's something in your life that's been causing you to feel stuck, be that in your health, be that in your relationships, be that in your career, and you're not quite sure how to fix it or where to turn, but it's getting to a point where you've got to do something about it because it's causing you some kind of pain, be that physical, be that mental, be that emotional then please do contact me on mail at lukenosis.com mail m-a-i-l at lukenosis l-u-k-e-n-o-s-i-s dot com and request a 30 minute complimentary unstuck session with me either over the telephone or over some kind of video messaging and please understand this is not a free therapy session this is not a hypnosis session or anything like that it's an opportunity to have me in your corner for 30 minutes to brainstorm some ways um, that potentially I can help you to pull yourself out of that hole that you're in to take your life to the next level always believe hypnopunk <laughs>